just did the interview portion with Dr. John Jaquish about all things OsteoStrong and X3. Now I'm going to do a circuit of both of them with the man himself, with the inventor. So we're going to start out with vibration, which is something I'm familiar with. Explain to me why we want to do vibration therapy in general or even before and after we do the OsteoStrong stuff. So vibration does have a hormonal effect. We talked about that. But... Uh, Really, from the perspective of getting ready for an osteostrong session, when you make the body unstable and you force reflexes to fire, um, those reflexes switch on more muscle that is then usable. It's called short term potentiation. So, m just more tissue is activated. So, when you go on to do the movements, you're, you're ready. Cool. Yeah. Right. Movement preparation is like, like uh, I think almost every I think the number is 87% of professional sports teams in the United States use vibration. And um, they use it for movement preparation. That's how they refer to it. Cool. And that's how we use it here. All right, I'm gonna try it out. Bend the uh, knees. Uh, right. I have one of these at home. I love this shit. Right, like so here's a slightly smaller one. You wanna keep, keep the, the joints soft. Okay. Yeah, just because you want the musculature to absorb the vibration. If you stand up straight, you feel in your head, that's not gonna hurt you, but it's not gonna have the intended effect. One of the best things about vibration Go down a deeper, yeah. is the vibration of the voice. <laughs> good. Oh yeah, good stuff. Maybe get a one foot, you know, like that. Yep. Yep. Other foot. Okay. You only need a few seconds of this. Okay. Yeah, Sounds we're good. good. We're good. All right. Cool. That's a good shot. The shot that doesn't suck. Now I'm gonna describe what he's looking at on the screen. So this is a this is a, a tablet screen. So he can see his own computerized bio, biofeedback right in front of him. So we see a first session, a best session, and a previous session. So three numbers he's comparing to, which are right here on the screen, and then he's going to attempt to create a, now you don't need to create an ever greater amount of force every time, but you want to create a large enough one to stimulate osteogenesis in the upper extremity. So hands right here, and there's a marker on the screen that shows so where that. So this shows my best is 770. My first is 603, my best is right. 770. So remember, people are much more capable in this range of motion than they are. Also, and what, like what, I said... 770 what? Pounds? pounds. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. See, it says right there, pounds. Oh, okay, cool. 120 um, degree angle of inclusion right here, 120 degree. And then the back of the hand, can I move them up a little bit, kind of in line with the clavicle. Oh, that's, okay. Yeah, that's where okay. we want to be. Okay, lean all the way back. Okay. okay. Now, deep breath. Exhale and straighten your arms. Good. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Go, go, go. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Come on, come on. Perfect. So, we see the, the meter move up and then it starts to march backwards when he goes to fatigue and it captures his five second best average, which ended up being 722 pounds. That was his second best ever. Nice. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, because when yeah. I came in after the flu on 12-1, uh, mm -hmm. 2018, I only hit 596. I remember that was a disappointing day. <laughs> it's like, I lost it. Yeah, all right, cool. Yeah. Okay, on great. to the next right. one. Next one, lower extremities. Okay. Does each machine have a name, by the way, or do we just call it by what body part? Lower growth trigger. Oh, lower growth trigger. So okay. this is upper growth trigger, lower growth trigger, postural growth trigger is the next one, okay. and then core. Got it. Okay, cool. Okay, so shoulders back. You want to distribute the weight over the whole back. Okay. And I'm going to describe what's on the screen. So his uh, best one looks like it's uh, 1,923 pounds to the lower extremities. Go for it. You can see his legs straightening out. You can see that. And then when he's done, you'll see the knees pop up. What's important to point out is the plate doesn't move 
and the seat doesn't move, what you're seeing is compression of bone. Joints too. Come on, keep going. Good, see, I knew you had more in you. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, you're good. 1,859. Wow, pretty close to the record. That's the craziest uh -huh. feeling when you release. I'm getting the happy chemicals. Yeah. But my first was only 9.52. That was right, so you May 5th, 2018. Almost doubled what he did in May when yeah. he started. That's bananas. And it's not like there's... It's not like your skill improves. I don't have better form. I haven't. Yeah, it's not swinging a golf club. There's, there's no like nothing. Like, it's just raw output. There's no way to game the system. Where, yeah. Oh, I figured it out. Now I can push harder. It just yeah. is what it is. Right. Right. Cool. Okay. On to the next one. All right. Next. All right. So, which uh, machine is this one run? Postural. Postural. Okay. And what is a growth trigger? When I hit mm -hmm. that part. Yeah. Hmm. Here, I'll show this. Okay, I might have typed, yeah. I think I might have typed my number in wrong. Okay, here we go. Because I have this band on my finger. I, I noticed like, that. Yeah, you know, oh, see, I did, yeah. I smashed my finger in the tripod earlier. Hmm. Okay, right. so as we're watching this happen, at some point, I hit the growth trigger. What does that mean? So we have two types of growth triggers identified. I mean, the, the, this is called the postural growth trigger device. Okay. But <clears throat> growth triggers are referenced, like we really know what it is on this one as the minimum dose response to trigger bone growth, 4.2 multiples of body weight through the hip. Um, that was determined in 2012. It was a great study using accelerometers and uh, bone turnover markers and blood tests which showed that if you don't put 4.2 multiples of body weight through your hip or more, you're not triggering anything. Wow. Um, now we might find out later that like super elderly people have a lower uh, threshold, but a very high level of force is required and this is why high impact activity is so closely associated with bone growth because you don't get that kind of load by lifting weights you get it by high impact, your body weight plus the velocity of the, of the fall. Right. Right, so here we can, we can get it. So um, you were, your, yeah, your best one is, that's yeah, incredible. So I started high. at 608 pounds, my best. And you're almost at 1200. <laughs> 1187, mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. crazy, that's double. Yeah. And then last time I came I was 1026 and that was when I was weak sauce with the flu. Right. All right, so this one, um, shoulders packed, right? Yeah, so you want to act like you're going to hit the ground, mm -hmm. but your back has a specific position. So if you see when you jump and land, your shoulders automatically go back okay. because it compensates for the shift of the body weight with the knees forward. And that's what protects your spine. Ah, uh, cool. So you pinch my thumb with your shoulder blades, mm -hmm. grab firmly, and of course the robotic arm already moved the 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 handles to the right place it for you. It remembers my position. Yeah, it remembers your position. Yeah, that's cool. And now you're just going to drive upward in a controlled manner. Good. Keep going. Okay. <laughs> it's funny. I'm smashing my finger. It's like, Are you like it's messing around? with my grip. Yeah, a little bit. Like one, my yeah. index finger's weakness. Okay. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. I think that finger is bugging you. No, you still put 929 this, pounds. This hand was um, a little greasy feeling, so I was uh, losing my grip a bit. Yeah, you don't perform kinda, better every time. You wanna try it one more time? Yeah, it was, kinda, it was kinda slipping off. Let me try it once more. I think cause I rubbed my hair and I got grease. I have the same problem all the time. <laughs> I got gre like hair product, greasy hair yeah. product in my hand. This one was like. <sighs> Story of my life. Yeah. Okay. Oh, there's some chalk right there. Grab a hold of that. Oh, for real? Yeah. Oh, right here? Yeah. Oh, cool. You dry your hands off. Oh, yeah, dude. There we go. I feel like legit power lifter. All right, let's see here. Oh, yeah. There we go. Should I just go straight into the real? Don't explode. Okay. Never explode. It's always okay. slow and controlled. Okay. But don't do a practice one. 
No, no, you're okay. you're definitely okay. okay. Ready. Come on. Come on. Excellent. We got a little better. Okay, yeah. good. Yeah. Perfect. Cool. All right. 972. There we go. Yeah. Close to my record of 1026. All right. Nice. Good times. Okay. All right, so John, we got this one, the core growth trigger. So we're working mm -hmm. on the core. Right. What's the, uh, the proper posture for this? Grab one? right here. Okay. Lean all the way forward. Okay. So you, you, wanna, you wanna protect your abdomen. So okay. that's, that's the impact. If something were coming at you, this is the only place we have uh, exposed organs, right? And it's not covered with bone. Okay. The only way to protect them, move the rib cage and the pelvis closer together. So it's kind of a hollow body position. Yes. Okay. Yes. So okay. when you're ready, do it. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Good. Breathe. Breathe. Keep it right there. Look at the screen. Keep it there. Keep it there. Keep it there. Keep it there. Come on. Come on. A little bit more. You're almost there. Great. Great. Okay, you're good. Uh, you miss your all-time best by just a couple of pounds. Oh shit, dude! Uh, like six pounds. That's why I say look at it. Right, but yeah, right. yeah, yeah. I mean, you're spent now. All right. But that's good. Cool. That's the. Uh, that's oh, the whole nice. protocol. Nice. So I'm almost up to my best again. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's so cool to be able to, like I was saying in the interview, to be able to gamify this and be able to compete with yourself. Right. So when we look at this, it says functional bone performance, uh, seventy-four percent. Right, it's the improvement, uh, the improvement of, of what you're able to do first time versus now. Wow, yeah. so after 13 sessions. <clears throat> right. Wow. Yeah, so it's a 74% output difference. That's crazy. Yeah. Fucking cool. Okay, awesome. Awesome. All right, so you wanna do some X3? Well, let me go get the X3. All right, cool. What do you think people have to need the most coaching on? Yep. Cool, thanks. <clears throat> Chest press. Chest press? Yeah. Okay. So there is a a oh, couple of. Buy this? Is there like a, a video tutorial thing on this? There's stage? 12 weeks of video programming. Holy shit! Yeah, yeah. Well, I wanted to make it like a P90X kind of experience oh, cool. where you get the whole thing, but. What I realize now is that people used to value a lot of video content, whereas now they actually don't. Oh. Because before, when like P90X was new, it's like people got you know six DVDs. It's like, oh, I got six movies. Look at all this content. Right. They don't want the content anymore. It's just like, get to the point. What do I need to do? Right. Show me how to do the exercises, and I never want to watch a video again. Right. And so it, I was shocked at like how like not effective that whole program was. Uh, so I feel like for me, if I was trying to figure it out on my own, I wouldn't get the right form and stuff. But once I, if I was able to watch a video and get the form right, I'm not going to forget it. Once but I I'm going to reshoot the the 12 week program. I'll tell somebody what to do over 12 weeks oh, okay. in a chart, and then it'll just be like. Here's each exercise, right. and then so you that and it just shows you what to do on what day. Right. Okay, cool. So <clears throat> these are the movements that are. Um, so we're gonna go over the two that are kind of hardest to figure out on your own, which is mostly the chest press. Getting in position for the chest press is challenging for some people. So there's a lot of wrong ways to do it, and people can still pull it off anyway. But you want to get the band around your back, and you want to be pushing straight away. So the easy way to do it is throw it over your shoulder like this. You get it crosswise around your body, right? Mm -hmm. Then you drop it down and have the band sit between your deltoid and your tricep like that. Drop the other arm down and then match the position. And then grab the bar like you're going to push it away. There you go. Cool. Now, I made that look really easy. For some reason, people get tangled in the band all the time. Okay. So, Let's see if I can remember it. Yeah. So if you, if you don't get this right, it's OK. <laughs> no one else does. It kind of reminded me of playing guitar. It's sort of how you put on a guitar. 
or a base, which I've done a bit of. So yeah, so okay. you, yeah. And then I create. Yep. And I move it down. Drop it down. Deltoid yep. and tri. So mm -hmm. And then same and thing on the other side. And then I'll put it down here. Yeah, your deltoid and your tricep right here. Okay. <clears throat> and then in terms of hand position, it looks like what's most comfortable is being at the edge of the, the textured part of it. That's that right. right. Now you want to make sure it's even force on both sides. Okay. It looks like you have a little more slack on that side than this side, so oh, you, okay. you want to adjust it so it's even. Oh, okay, right, right. And then, does that, does that feel about mm -hmm. right? It does, yeah. So you're going to push straight away. Now I want you to keep constant tension. Don't lock out at the top. Oh, okay. Okay, and then when you bring it back, I'm going to stop you right about here. Up. Good, good, down, good, hit my hand when you get out here, okay, good. So the objective is to first fatigue the strong range of motion. So keep going, come on, good. So you can see how, you see how he's jackhammering, I mean you're like shivering all over the place. Growth hormone, that's, that's going to be a huge upregulator because all your stabilizers are firing because you have to handle 300 pounds at the top. You don't normally bench press 300 pounds. So, like all kinds of firing is happening to support you. Keep going, good, good, good. Up, up, don't rest, up, 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 no, 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 there's no rest, this is where it counts. Okay, now just do half reps. So now you're doing like 150 pound reps, good, good. You can bring it back to my hand, good. Up. Good. I'm smoked, dude. No, do, do two more. Good. One more. And that last one is perfect, because the last one oh, should just fuck. be like an inch, like you can barely move it. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. That was the best chest workout of your life. Okay. Yeah. Feels like it. Yeah. Holy yeah. shit. Yeah, now these, these devices you don't sweat. This one, you All do. Right. I noticed that. Yeah. Makeup. Yeah. Shine. Powder, please. Yeah. Oh my god, dude, that is cool. Yeah. So you're going to fatigue by shortening the range of motion. Right. So right. you do fatigue all ranges of motion. And right. It's like we get the, this criticism like, oh, you don't fatigue all. Yeah, you do. But you're fatiguing them in a relevant way. So by the time you get to fatigue here, you're using a load that isn't going to damage the joint. Right. So you're not going to be sore from this. Right. Wow. Yeah. Best chest workout of your life with the heaviest weight you've ever put. <laughs> from a, from a, a ranged, you know, like for yeah. full range of motion perspective, yeah. and you're not going to be sore. Wow. And you're going to grow. Wow. Yeah. How do you get out of it? Is there a set way or just no, an yeah, intuitive you got it. way? That's good. Okay. Any way to get out is fine. Okay. Um, let's also show everybody the deadlift. Okay. Now, like, how, how much of your, uh, your followers are female? Is it like 50%? 65. 65% female. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, ladies, um, I'm going to talk to you about hair care. I'm kidding. Uh, the, the, um, the deadlift is the favorite of so many women because, like I said in the show, uh, growing the back of your legs, growing those hamstrings, it just stretches that skin out a little bit, and what you think is cellulite is really just loose skin because you have underdeveloped hamstring, and as soon as that stretches out, the back of your legs look dynamite. So. You want the band doubled over, similar to the chest press. Now, of course, the appropriate band, like not everybody uses the black one. That's kind of the heavy one. So uh, you drop the ground plate, which has a groove in it for the, for the band to seat in. And you get it seated like that. So and you want to try and make it somewhat even before you put it on the ground, but you can still adjust it. Place it on the ground, OK? Yeah, we're right about there, so jump in here. Okay. So, arch your back, pinch my thumb with your shoulder blades. You want to engage the trapezius the whole time. People that let their shoulders hang when they deadlift, that's an injury waiting to happen. Okay. So, now you're just going to stand up. Good. All the way. Oh. All the way up. All the way up. All the way. All the way. All the way. Good. Now down. Ooh, my grip is, is having a hard oh, time. Oh yeah. Hang yeah, on. grip strength is the first thing that you really stimulate when you do this. Okay. What's interesting about you is you have a really strong chest press 
And you you don't typically deadlift, right? No. Yeah. Never. Yeah. I was afraid to hurt my lower back where mm -hmm. I had problems for a long time, so I've been skittish about deadlifts. Right, your right side's stronger than your left, I can feel it. Perfect. Okay, now shorten the range. This is, this is a band that's still too heavy for you, but I still want to keep going so everybody can see it. So now, good, now go down. Good, up, good, just past the kneecap, and now go down. Keep the back arched, keep my, my thumb pinched. Get even shorter than that if you want to. Good. I wish you guys had thermal cameras so you could see the heat coming off his body. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> That's hardcore. Yeah, hardcore. Wow. Cool. I'm on fire, dude. Yeah. That's yeah, you feel crazy. great, right? Yeah. yeah. Heaviest workout in your back you probably ever had, especially since you've been injured for a considerable period of time. Yeah. You were never at any risk. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. A total biohack for strength. Right? Yeah. Especially for injuries and compromised joints yep. and stuff. Yep. So even when I was doing this one, which I don't even do bench presses really, I mean push-ups I can position myself in certain ways where it doesn't aggravate this. Mm -hmm. I'd never do a bench press because this just gets tweaked. It's just mm -hmm. on fire right here. And you didn't feel it here. A little bit, but I mean, I could, I could meander my way through it. You didn't break form. Okay, cool. So, what, what you might think is sort of getting it into the right position where it doesn't hurt is actually yeah. just the right position. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. But you don't see it. I mean, like right. I see it because I look at this all day long. Right. With all kinds of people. Right. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Dude, awesome. Awesome. Well, thanks for the yeah. private session, man. It's yep. amazing. Awesome. Appreciate it, dude. Yep. All right. You need a new Band-Aid. We, <laughs> we trashed your Band-Aid. <laughs> awesome.